I would like to talk a little bit to you about summary. So basically, what is a summary anyways? It is a short overview of something. It really can be anything, but usually it's some kind of text or a media, something like that. It is also unbiased and usually fair to the author or speaker or whatever it is that you're watching or listening to. Um, you're going to often be asked to write a summary in college, and you might even want to write summaries yourself just to kind of remind yourself and to check your understanding of something. However, summarizing is a balance, so you have to kind of keep an eye on the author's ideas and stay focused to those author's ideas. On one hand, you want to just put yourself into their shoes when writing a summary, and you want to suspend your own beliefs and opinions and write an unbiased summary. Um, you want to inhabit the author's worldview just like you were then, like you were an actor. One of the things you really want to do is try to avoid being as biased as much as possible. In general, a short summary is appropriate in a lot of cases. Um, so there's nothing wrong with the short summary, depending on the situation. I'm going to take a minute to look at two different examples of a bias versus unbiased or non-biased summary. Um, this is an article called Don't Blame the Eater, and you can see it's a really brief um, beginning to a summary that somebody wrote, and it says, David Zinchenko's article, Don't Blame the Eater, is nothing more than an angry rant in which he accuses the fast food companies of an evil conspiracy to make people fat. I disagree because these companies have to make money, right? Or you can do a much less biased summary, and this is just a short summary, and say David uh, Zenchenko's article, Don't Blame the Eater, discusses the fast food industry's ubiquitousness. He continues by emphasizing that many people live in food deserts and struggle to find access to quick, cheap, healthy foods. I agree with Zenchenko. People do want to be healthy, but oftentimes they do not have access to healthy food. So as you can see, like you want to make sure that you leave those biased words out, things like evil conspiracy, right? Um, for this class, in most situations, you are going to also respond to the author. So please tell the reader as much as they're going to need in order to understand the article or what you're referring to and the merits of it on its own, okay? So independent of you. Don't assume that the reader or audience already knows um, what you or the author is talking about. In other words, make sure the reader really knows what the author was saying. Don't try to create some kind of cliche because cliche syndrome is a real problem. Um, make sure that you're not just confusing it with something that you already believe. So for example, sometimes people will uh, read Dr. King's letter from Birmingham jail and say things like, oh, it's about let's all just get along when that wasn't really the point. You know, he's calling, um, it's a call to arms and like speaking directly to uh, those pastors and preachers who um, had in many ways turned, the back, turned their backs on him, right? So it's not exactly a um, let's all get along. Um, on the other hand, know that know where you're going to be going. So this is kind of a paradox. Summarizing requires you to represent the author fairly, but it also requires you um, to exert a quiet influence over the summary. So you really should have your own agenda as you go along. Um, but this really does depend on your topic. In general, though, a good summary has a good focus or spin. So mostly remember that you're summarizing with your own agenda in mind. This means that you'll want to include things that you think are important and want to discuss further in your summary. It's okay to leave some things out. As long as you represent the author's ideas fairly, that should be okay. Uh, lastly, be aware of list summaries. They can be really boring. Um, so you can like, this happened, then this happened, then this happened. It can be awfully boring. So look at this cartoon. Um, it's from another text called They Say, I Say. And you can see in the cartoon, it says, um, and then he points out, and then another, and then they say, and then they say, right, the effect of a typical list summary, right? And everybody is asleep. You really don't want to do that. Um, however, sometimes a list summary is appropriate. It just depends on the situation. At times, it will be effective and it will be a good way of organizing your thoughts um, and unifying depending on your own agenda. Lastly, 
And very importantly, signal verbs. Be sure that you use words that are signaling that this comes from an author, from another source. So you keep wanting to say, or keep saying throughout the whole entire summary, this is coming from someone else. So you want to say things like uh, the author urges, the author challenges, the author indicts, the author declares, um, or something like that. Um, and if you look right below in the uh, module page, you should be able to see a whole list of uh, signal verbs that I put together and also your peers did. So make sure you search through and find some signal verbs that you think might work. All right. With that, I hope that you understand summaries a little bit more. And I will see you online.